The heartache of a parent can never be quantified when you have to bury a child. This is Teresa Munoz. Not only is she grieving the loss of her daughter, she is grieving the loss of two. One of her daughters was the pride of the country, having won Miss Honduras. So how did she and her sister Sophia wind up buried in shallow graves? It's 2014 and her country Honduras has the title of murder capital of the world and right next door El Salvador competing for the very same title. And sadly to say the killing of her daughters was almost commonplace here where nearly two women a day were killed in a country of just 8 million people. This is Maria Jose Alvarado Munoz. You're witnessing a dream come true for this young, undeniably beautiful woman. She is being crowned Miss Honduras. She's just 19 here, studying at a university and a life of possibilities ahead of her. Now, because of this victory, she was set to represent her country in London later that year at Miss World 2014. Now, the Munoz family, they weren't rich by any means. As a matter of fact, they came from the lower class of society growing up amongst gang-infested neighborhoods, as will come into play later in this story. Now, just months after being named Miss Honduras, Maria and her older sister were invited to a party at a hot springs resort in her town of Santa Barbara. Now, the two had a wonderful time from all accounts, and after the party, witnesses saw the sister step into a truck with no license plates, and uh, that would be the last time anyone would see them. Now, even though this is the murder capital of the world, the highest femicide rate, right, the murder of women in Latin America, you would think that it's a society that doesn't hold much regard for the life of women, but they actually take beauty pageants very seriously it was a symbol of national pride for them so now that they have crowned this new miss honduras maria alvarado munoz uh she became their national treasure of course and now she is missing so of course this became national news teresa munoz would plead with the kidnappers on air to bring her daughters back safely and sadly this would all be in vain because six days later on November 19 of 2014, two bodies were discovered not too far from the party, buried in a field, both shot to death. And both bodies were identified as 19-year-old Maria Munoz and her sister Sofia Munoz. But how? How could this have happened, okay? How did Miss Honduras move around now that she was a celebrity without security without guards without police looking out for her or basically just good friends to protect her especially if she's going to a party of this magnitude okay that's the question detectives had to answer as they started looking into the case now let's go back to this grieving mother because her finger was already being pointed in a certain direction and she wanted them to question a man named plutarco Ruiz, and that was Sophia's boyfriend. Okay, now she trusted him to watch over her daughters that night. She wanted him to bring them back safely, which he failed to do. And it turns out that Ruiz was a name well known to authorities. Okay, a notorious gang member and drug trafficker. And so it turns out that the quote unquote security detail of the sisters that night was in the hands of the local gang members, which actually if you think about it should be in really good hands okay they they should have been really good bodyguards so again how did the girls wind up in a ditch well when ruiz was brought in for questioning okay with warrants to search his house and his trucks the, the same truck that the girls were seen getting into um it was suspicious for them to learn that the truck was in the shop it went in for a detail with specific instructions to sand the bed of the truck and repaint it. Guns were seized and let's not forget that they already know that he was pushing drugs all across Honduras. So if they didn't have him for the murders yet, I mean, they were going to finally make an example of him for these other crimes. Now, it's almost not surprising anymore when criminals sing like birds when faced with life or death 
A plea deal was struck. He even gave up his accomplice, a man named Eris Maldonado. Now Ruiz confessed to the killings on the night of the 13th of 2014. And his story goes, he picked up both ladies to attend this party. And according to Ruiz, the ladies had a good time. But his girlfriend Sophia had too good a time, in his opinion. Because at one point in the party, he saw her dancing with another man. And in this culture, that is a no-no. Especially if you're dating a notorious gang member. So after the party, uh, witnesses saw the women get into this truck with no plates. And would also see another man get into the truck, which was his accomplice, Maldonado. Now, Ruiz couldn't help but bring up to Sofia... How he felt disrespected by her dancing with another man. Now, the argument would get out of control. It would get heated. Then he pulled over the truck to confront Sophia. And in the heat of passion, he pulls out his gun and shoots her to death. And of course, Maria tries to escape after seeing her sister just brutally murdered in front of her face. And she was shot twice in the back by Ruiz. So, Ruiz and Maldonado would find a field dig the graves and bury the bodies, flee the scene. And uh, Ruiz is given life in prison, of course. And Maldonado is given about 10 years for his role in the crime. And now the heartbroken mother, Teresa Munoz, and her remaining daughter, uh, a girl named Corey, have built a shrine for Sofia and Maria inside their house. And they are literally forced to grieve in solitary inside their house, which is heavily guarded by soldiers. Okay, MPs, military police, because these gang-infested neighborhoods, it's definitely a real possibility that they would retaliate. And like I told you guys before, the life of women here in Honduras is unceremonious, I guess you could say, because 2014 alone saw 500 plus women murdered. And it's the usual kind of crimes against women, jealous boyfriends vengeance just to be made an example of if maybe a dude owed them money you kill their girlfriend name a crime against women and it was an epidemic in honduras the lack of gang units basically leaving this growing problem unchecked for so long led to mexican drug cartels moving in running the streets wild and this would finally force the government to address this issue. They would deploy the military police to wrestle back this control. And they would boast that the homicide rate has gone down and femicide has dropped by half in 2020. But the rate of unexplained deaths, murders, has increased astronomically. Confused? Here's what I think that means, okay? Nothing fucking changed, okay, except the accounting. Unexplained deaths are simply not logged as homicides, right? So very funny, Honduras. So I'll just leave you with some sound advice. If you're from Honduras and you have the ability to leave, why not? And if you're thinking about going to Honduras, especially if you're a woman, please don't. My name is Monks. Please subscribe. It's the easiest way to support the channel. I've just added creepy pasta readings to the lineup. The first one being a psychological horror story called 823 Ravenswood. I'd love to know what you think about them. And now go protect the ones that you love and love the ones that protect you.